It's 2020, the decade of uh, anti-aging people. This is the decade when we're going to reverse our age back, right? We have a guest today who is 91. He's here to give us 92. I know. He came here to give us confidence, right? Victor, there's promise. And I was encouraging him to get a second wife. And he was considering it already. <laughs> All right. Good morning, guys. Thank you for being here. My name is Charles Sine. Um, thank you. We have um, quite a few guests here today. And I know we have some people online. I just came back from Baltimore. So I think my friends and my high school classmates will be watching from Baltimore and some friends in Malaysia and uh, San Francisco. So uh, good morning to everybody. My name is Charles Sine. I'm the CEO of Anti-Fragility Health Clinic. So we are here today to talk about aging, but the other side of aging, anti-aging. You know, there's a great possibility that we could live forever. I know, right? Some of you are like, why? I'm going to run out of money, right? But so today we want to talk about I want to welcome a couple of people. So, Happy New Year. Have I seen you this year, so? Not yet. Happy New Year, so. Good to have you. How have you been? Pretty good. Great. Beate is back. Happy New Year again, Beate. You're looking good. Great. Thanks for being here. And Elizabeth is here. Kim is here. Victor is here. Morning. In the house. And we have Jad. And Jad brought his 92 year old friend. USA. USA. Okay. USA. USA. Mr. Francisco. Oh, from San Francisco? Yes. Yeah. From San Francisco, and his name is Francisco. Oh, Francisco. Wow. Actually, I was born in Peru, in the land of the Incas. The Peruvian. The land of kings. Wow. Yes. The land that of might kings. be the secret of my, be my long life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all know what happened to the Incas. They reigned for a long, long time. Right. Yes. You come from a tribe of kings. Right. Thank you, Francisco, for joining us. We have Dinah. We have Mike on camera. We have uh, Vincent, Dr. Yi, Louise, and Grace at the back. Okay, let's get going. All right. So I wanted to start by showing you an article. Can you pull what's on the printer for me? There's a new NR vitamin promising to address aging in adults. So there's a lot of new research coming out. And a lot of this research is talking about supplements that are addressing a fundamental issue about aging. Right? So there are lots of things good that go on with aging. Aging. Aging is actually a stressor, it's a disease. We are not supposed to really age. And that's what the new research is finding out. So we're going to talk about some of that today. So what we do here is that I've been talking the, uh, the last two weeks about two things. Well, the main thing is longevity. And what is longevity? It's two things. is to live a long and healthy life. I want us to be very clear about that definition. It is to live a long and healthy life, right? So we break that into what we call health span and lifespan. Why are they different? Why is health span different from lifespan? At some point it will end. So, but I want to correct that. So what we're trying to do is that, look at this graph. Right? You know, we're born and then we peak at 20. And then typically we deteriorate very quickly. And this, if you look at the, the graph here of descent, in the last 20 years of life, most people spend that sick. So you could still live long, as Elizabeth was saying, which could be 90 years. Somebody here is actually older than that. Let's say 100 years. 
but towards the end chronic illness captures and and how do we how do we know that we look at a lot of the data that says that 60 percent of healthcare costs are spent in the last six months of life right so this is really the conversation about health and longevity. So the studies have looked at people like Francisco, people who are, we, we call them centenarians, people who are living to 100 and beyond, like my grandfather, he was 102 before he died. They've looked at centenarians, and genetically, they're actually different from most of us. Yes, centenarians, people who live beyond 100 naturally most of them don't have chronic illnesses and then one day they die in their sleep so they've looked at them they've studied them why are these people that way when most of us by our 50s 60s we have high blood pressure we have diabetes we have this we have that yet these people live 90 100 105 and they don't have a lot of chronic illnesses so that's one target they looked at what is it in their bodies that makes them different and that's where this, so you start looking at a new kind of graph that looks like this, where they live healthy, they lose energy as they're growing older. So this is age, sorry, this is age, and this is health or performance. So we're looking at health span and lifespan. So you can stay healthy for a long time before you die. Right? So that's where this whole research about longevity is. Are we clear now about it? So we're going to now focus about not this part, how you stay healthy. We talk about that a lot. But now we want to talk about lifespan. Okay? All right? Are we all clear? Yeah. Where, do, where is energy made in the human body? In the cells. The muscle. The mitochondria. Okay. In the cell, we have a nucleus. Right? And we have the mitochondria. So let's do some quick... But okay, let's hold on. Let's do some quick biology. All right, so this is the cell. The mitochondria... Baby, pay attention, pay attention. If not, I'll ask you questions later and you won't know. The mitochondria came from outside. It was not part of the human cell. So over... The, 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 over the years, the mitochondria came into the human cell and became a friend of our nucleus. And that is how energy is produced from instructions from the cellular nucleus. Okay, so it's very interesting in, in architecture. So mitochondria does not produce energy if it does not receive instruction. So what is actually happening as you age, it is this protein, NMD or NAD, that provides that communication to the mitochondria to make energy is depleted energy with aging. Sensing. Okay. Not energy sensing. It's depleted. That protein that provides the communication from the nucleus to the mitochondria to make energy, that protein depletes with age. Are you understanding that? Mm -hmm. You have question, Elizabeth. Okay, that starts at 20? It begins with, it's the maximum, yes. Oh. Uh, we're going to talk about other things. I don't want to go into the deep biochemistry of why that happens. But that protein begins to deplete. Think about it. So what is happening in the cells, you think, that is causing the depletion of the protein? So they're wearing out, like a car part. Yeah, what's causing it to wear out? Oxidation? No, so the lack of nutrients, infections, Toxicity, we talked about the things yeah. that they cause chronic illness. Oh, okay. And so it affects the copying of cells. So when cells are copying, because what, are, what is energy used for in the cellular architecture? 
there are three big things that energy is used for. To cleanse the cell? Yes, when we're sleeping, for cleaning. Mm -hmm. What's the second big one? To give it nutrients? No. To absorb? No, actually that's correct for metabolism. What's the third one? For replication. Correct. For copying and for repair. Yeah. Those are the three big energy uses, right? To copy, to make new cells, because cells die, so new cells have to be made. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, for metabolism, right? Right, for metabolism, and what was the first one again? For cleansing. So like when we are sleeping, uh, we need something, no, no, to sit over there. Hi, how are you, good morning. Right, so those are the three uses of energy. So let's think about it. So when you don't sleep very well, the body doesn't do its complete cleansing job. When you don't eat very well, the body does not, first of all, get the right energy and doesn't do metabolism. That's why cardiometabolic illnesses are such a big issue. That's why everybody has high sugar levels, the hyperglycemia, all of those things. And the third one is the copying. If we don't have good nutrients and good strong cellular architecture, the copies, what we call the epigenetic effect, the copies get duller and duller, and that's what affects that communication. So you tend to find out that at 20, when you have really strong cells, you're not exercising, you're not sleeping well, you're not eating well, you have infections and toxicity. It makes a copy by the time you're 21. The copy of 21 is not as vital, viral, as the copy at 20. Then at 22, at 23, by the time you're 30, there's that decline, fatigue begins to set in because the cellular architecture is not making that energy. And so you are just on this energy decline. You see that decline? So energy is one of the key issues about lifespan. As you grow older, you just feel more tired. And that is really at the core of it. So it doesn't matter how well, even, because for a long time, most people don't take care of themselves until like most of us here, we get to 40, 50, 60, then we start saying we have a problem, right? That is when disease shows up. But the issues started a long time ago. And so now, to try and repair is the big challenge. So there's a second, so we have said it, energy is the number one issue. What's the second issue about lifespan? What do you think it is? No. Okay. It's just something that was just discovered is the loss of information from that copy. The loss of information. So when we are making copies, we are actually losing information. And that loss of information, it's what we call the epigenetic effect, actually affects the long-term health because things that were supposed to be turned off or turned on are no longer getting the right instructions, including the energy architecture in the cell, that communication between the nucleus and the mitochondria. Okay? So are we making, are we clear? So there is this loss of information and there is this energy issue. So I'm going to go back again to the mitochondria. All right? I want to talk about this energy architecture because most people don't have a clear understanding about it. So how does the mitochondria produce energy? It does the work. It carries all the nutrients where it needs to go. <clears throat> no, that is transport. That's not how you make energy. How do we make energy? Where does energy originally come from? Mitochondria? 
from the sun. No. Light. If we don't have light, there will be no life on earth. Mm -hmm. So originally, the photons come from the sun, and where do they go? Into the body first. Skin. Plant first. Into the plant. Into the plant. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's why we are phytonutrients. Oh. Oh. Yes. They go into the plants. When we eat the plants, so when we eat animals and plants, we're getting energy that comes from the sun. The only other thing that the sun, when it hits our body, what does it do? That's the vitamin D factory. So that's a different thing. We don't get energy direct from the sun. Yes, our, the energy source is through our, what they call them, phyto nutrients mm -hmm. the nutrients that take sun and they use carbon dioxide to make their food and they bring out oxygen that's why walking in the forest is very good because you breathe fresh oxygen mm -hmm. or the sea traps carbon dioxide when the sun hits it and releases oxygen mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's why oxygen drives us because that's where the real oxygen comes from okay let's go to energy so now when these nutrients come into our body what does the mitochondria do the mitochondria needs those nutrients to go through what we call the energy production cycle it, to produce right to produce adp and then adp binds with the phosphate to produce ATP and that is where the energy molecule is locked in. You have got to know it, it's running in Can your you body. Can you say that whole thing again please? <laughs> <laughs> so ADP, ATP is something that most of us must have learned in science class as the energy molecule. Adenosophene triphosphate, ATP, that's what it's called. It's the energy molecule of life. That's what the mitochondria deals with, right? Okay? And the mitochondria does not last very long. It dies really very quickly because it's really busy producing energy, right? So what happens in the cell when the mitochondria is producing energy? What do you think happens? Think about energy. When we produce energy, what else do we produce? The byproducts. And what are those byproducts? Oxidation. 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 The ROS. The ROS. The, the reactive <laughs> oxygen species. That's why we have what we call oxidative stress. So like, okay. let me give you the example. When a car is in a garage and it's running, it produces exhaust if you don't open it for the exhaust to escape yes. so you poison a cell that is not being released from its oxidative stress so one of the big issues around aging is oxidative stress if you don't take antioxidants or you don't eat fruits that are antioxidants and what are antioxidants they go in there like glutathione they bind to the arrow eggs and then they excrete them so they'll keep your cells healthy right is that making sense guys yeah. francisco is like on a journey to the incas <laughs> yes francisco is like wow i've never heard of this guy before time for a sacrifice yeah, <laughs> yeah francisco says you're thinking of taking victor up the mountain for a sacrifice and victor is struggling and you say come on boy we're giving you to the gods right to live forever you have to live forever exactly the incas had that solved already isn't it so is everybody with me it's very important we understand this energy issue so um a lot of people so in the mitochondria the mitochondria has two ways to take the food that we eat to make energy. What are the two ways? And what are the three things that it uses to do that? Like absorption? No. So what are the three things that it uses to make energy, the mitochondria? Fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. All right. 
So why does so why does it okay? So which one is its favorite? The carbohydrate. Why is carbohydrate its favorite? It's fast. It's, it's easy. easy. But what is the problem with the carbohydrate? What we call glycolysis process. What is the problem with that? Converts it to sugar. Instant gratification will kill you. No, 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 no. You're going a different route. It's when you have too much of it and the mitochondria cannot use it, then the body now starts worrying where do we store this bullshit? So the question is let's go back to the mitochondria. What is the problem? with the mitochondria dealing with carbohydrate glycolysis. It's going to produce the, 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 the fat, the raw fat. What no, it produces more waste. waste. It's Should inefficient. It's inefficient. It's an inefficient. That's why for like boxers or people who run marathon, when you eat a lot of carbohydrates and you run, there's an accumulation of lactic acid. Mm -hmm. That is the cause. energy. Yeah, that's a, the concentration of the end of the muscles producing waste that is from burning inefficiently. Okay, so um, so the other two is what we call oxidative phosphorylation, where the mitochondria takes oxygen, call the whole oxygen sensing, and actually breaks down proteins and fats to produce energy. That's what happens why intermittent fasting is so important. Because like right now you see my stomach is growling because I'm not going to eat till evening. Because now my body is operationally, because by the time you're in fasting by the 12th hour to the 14th hour, the body has moved into oxidative phosphorylation where the mitochondria is now looking at protein and fat to produce energy. And it is a much more efficient, cleaner process. And that is why it is one of the flag bearers for long life. Is this making sense, guys? So fasting is the... Uh, fasting lets the body move mitochondria away from burning carbohydrates to burn protein and fat. And so you're going to live longer because it's, they, yeah, because it's a much cleaner process for making energy. Okay. Is that making sense? That's why yes. intermittent fasting is one of the big stand issues for long life. And it comes with a lot of other blessings in that the body now is not using too much energy for one of the other things I said it was using it for, for metabolism. So it's conserving energy. It's not also using too much energy for waste extracts. So imagine if you're eating three times a day, the work the body has to do, to two times a day, then to one time a day. Well, just like you drive your car less and then you can drive it longer because you have less mileage, is that the way you yes. do it? Yes, that that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so when you went to watch. buy a 10 year old car, no, to you want to know why my car because there's too much mileage in it. You want to buy Soul's car. Soul's car is 20 years old, only 5,000 miles. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to buy Soul's car? And then someone would say, But I used it very well. I want 20,000 for you. Say, But it's 20 years old and sold, right? There's the issue of the age of the car and the mileage. Do you now see the issue? So the less you eat, the less waste you produce, the less you are destroying your mitochondrial architecture. And that is what creates longevity, one of the arms of longevity. Is that making sense, guys? Yeah. Very, very important that we understand this energy issue. And so now, even though the cell, and that's why one of the best ways to lose weight, it's just to reduce the amount of calories or the amount of time you eat and just fast. So intermittent fasting is not just about um, that it really gives you a longer life. It also makes you much healthier because it really conserves your energy for those very important functions. So now, when you are not using energy for metabolism and for waste disposal, 
most of that energy is now focused on cell repair and replication. Is that making sense? So we have less, we have good quality copies. Is that making sense? Why do we have to make copies of cells? Because of cells. To continue uh, to be alive. I don't understand. Why is that? The old ones get burned out. They get used <laughs> up. How, so typically, how long do cells last in our body? It depends on what organ. It depends on? Different, depends on which organ. All right. So give us the one that lasts the longest. Which one is the shortest? The shortest organ? Skin. Skin. Skin, right? skin cells. Skin cells. Right, we, we, that's why we shed them out almost every day. The liver is the longest one, the liver. I think the, the, the heart, the liver, and a couple of them are long, long term because it takes them time to mature. But when you start, like people like me who have cardiometabolic issues like high blood pressure or uh, hypertension or high stress levels, it's because the cells in my heart and in my epithelium are dying. And why are they dying? They're dying because of that process. Do you understand? And if you keep using energy the way you're using, then those cells are going to die, and then those organs will die, and then you die off. So it is very important that to live long and to live healthy, that you really subject yourself to a proper and optimized energy management system. Okay? That's number one. Everybody gets that clear? Yeah. Any questions on that? So that's why there's a lot of talk now about intermittent fasting. And it is a good thing. Because I said it before that if at 20, if at 20 you're eating 2,000 calories, at 40, you should be at 1,000 calories. At 60, you should be at 500. And at 80, you should be at 250. Mm. Salad, even more than that. I'm going to die. <laughs> 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 One piece of chocolate, that's me. <laughs> no, it depends on your activity, though, right? No, it doesn't. This does well, not how, include how would you drinks. have enough energy with only 500 calories? But we're talking so about calories, we're not, not talking protein, about nutrients. Not nutrients, you still can take your protein. You, you see, this is the challenge. We have this well, architecture. Yeah. Yeah. No, the body doesn't need calories. But the protein is calories. Uh, yeah, but it will convert. Yeah, but the body. This is the obsession that Americans have with food. We're talking about nutrients and calories. This is calories. This is not nutrients. So, nutrients in a protein drink does not count. No, it counts, but it is really limited. And why is it limited? If it, they didn't put that there, you will not drink it. The taste will be awful. Oh, yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> so they've tried to make you, from when we're a little kid, all the medication was sweet, so we'll take it. If it's not sweet, you won't, you make your face like that and spit it out. They right? And in Africa, they hold you like that and force it down. Because nobody's going to give you some sweet things, right? So we, they've, we've made... Each of those uh, 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 meals contain about 100 to 200 calories because they had to sweeten it with a, sh with a sugar that is not really a high glycemic level. So if we can taste good, we can take it often because we're going to take it for the rest of our lives. It will be like punishment, right? <laughs> I remember when my grandmother used to give me bitter leaf soup. Bitter leaf? Yeah, so we have this bitter leaf soup in our culture that they eat like every Saturday and after you eat it, you'll be pooing all day. It cleanses <laughs> you completely. My grandmother made it every Saturday. I hated it because it was so bitter. But it had very good cleansing effect. It was like a detox that we did every, plus the castor oil we took in the morning. Anyway, is this making sense on this calorie thing? If you live to eat, then you have a problem. We need to live. In, in early man, early man, like animals, only ate when they were hungry. Animals don't eat when they're not hungry. 
We are the only ones who have developed eating habits out of addiction, not because we're hungry. And so that's one of the key issues, that you should only eat when you're hungry. And I've been trying it, and I realize I'm only hungry in the evening. <coughs> I take my nutrients, but I'm only really hungry in the evening. So it's really important to think about it. And so David, David, whose article is on the next page, talks about it. I'm going to show you. He says that um, you should only eat when you're hungry. And if you start testing it, you find out that most times when we eat, we're not actually hungry. We're eating because it's time to eat. That's how we've been conditioned. It's time to eat. All right, so let's talk about some of the other strategies around longevity. So we're gonna talk now about what we call nutritional biochemistry. Does this make sense? Elizabeth, you're still caught up with this calorie thing? Yeah, she was still thinking about Because Elizabeth thing. is moving towards uh, 250. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> 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 and I'm still healthy and I don't yeah, eat 250. Elizabeth, yeah. come on. I know you. You don't eat I that much. Look good. Toast and butter. Elizabeth, you're just making noise. You don't eat that much. You just like sugar. That's the problem. You don't really eat that much. You just like sugar and you're going to break that addiction. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of things. So in nutritional biochemistry, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about three things. One is calorie restriction. Two is diet restriction. And three is fasting. So I already introduced that subject. So these three things drive lifespan. So we already talked about the calorie restriction. After 60 years old, you should not even be eating carbohydrates. Too much calories. You should be eating plants, proteins, and fats too much calories in carbohydrates. And we also have this issue of insulin resistance that is plaguing our cultures now because in the days when people used to eat a lot of calories, they used to walk everywhere. So the ultimate amount of activity to match if you continue eating these calories is to run 23 miles a day. If you run 23 miles a day, then you'll be expending all the calories there. But then you'll be overworking your mitochondria and you'll kill it. Right? So we've spoken about calorie restriction. Very, very important. And that's why you see that people are moving towards proteins and fats. Because fats also, right? Think about it. Protein, amino acids... You know, some people say, I'm not going to eat protein. Well, if you only eat plants, plants don't have enough protein diversity to meet your cell rebuilding and repairing architecture, which are amino acids. So you need to eat some kind of animal or get that protein, those amino acids, from some other means. The plant kingdom does not have all of it. So being vegetarian is a kind of very challenging issue. I'm not saying you should not be, but you need to look at how am I going to get the amino acids that plants do not have, right? And most of the protein plants, right, like peanuts and things like that, are inflammatory. So it's very challenging for vegans to sort out the protein requirements which is fundamental as the building blocks of the body. None of us will be alive without proteins. You cannot. So if you are not eating good and quality amount of proteins, that's very dangerous for you. The second part is fats. You need to eat very good fats because this actually uses <laughs> one third of the energy in the body. Our brain uses one third of all the energy that the body produces. That is why sleep is so important. 
Because when you are asleep, the brain really does not use that much energy because they're just cleaning. When you're awake, they say the aspect of being awake is what actually kills us. Because being awake requires a lot of energy to keep us awake. Because you have to think about standing, balance, sight. So all these things are running down the, the battery, right? I have to recognize you. That's why we can't even train machines to recognize. See, imagine me standing in front of you. I'm doing over a million tasks just by standing in front of you. I'm balanced. I'm standing straight. I'm talking. I'm looking. I'm recognizing. All these things are running at the same time. So the energy cells have to manage all of these different things that this very optimized animal is doing. Do you understand? We are trying to build robots. We cannot make robots even look at you at the same time, but at the corner of my eye see that uh, soul is doing something else. We have not built animals, I uh, mean uh, robots that can do that, right? They can do only sequential tasks. Mm -hmm. Human beings can stand straight, can stand on one leg, even without thinking about it. See, try, look on video and see experiments with the robots, put it on one leg. The programming to do that, that's why we submit to the fact that God was just the one who created this architecture. But trying to understand the architecture is very challenging, right? So facts are very important, good facts. Where do you get it? Avogadro. <laughs> and look, that's why we just told you this morning to avocado. eat avocado. Dr. Dendry, Dr. Dendry said, even olive oil, unless it's the best, cleanest. I yeah, mean, yeah, you cannot eat it. Yeah, it has to be the virgin olive green oil. olive oil. Yes. If green. not, you must eat avocado oil or grapeseed oil or coconut. Coconut, coconut. yeah. That's coconut that's oil that's is actually one of the best. Oh, okay. Yes. Even for your skin, black people use coconut oil on their skin a lot because it comes with no yeah. and the hair. It comes with no added problems, right? Just as a lotion. There's coconut cream oh, for the skin. Yes, with no additives. Filipinos use that a lot, right? Yeah. In the village. I use just use it for oil. my skin today. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Week special. Yeah. That's what we call yeah, a lot of people in tropical countries. Okay. Cacao. Cacao to oh, yeah, that's yes, that's, yes, that's very good too. Yes. 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 Cacao. The natural one, not mixed, right? That's why dark chocolate is good. I mean, I used to eat the raw cacao seeds. Very bitter. Right, then that's why they took it to Switzerland, put sugar in it, and there now everybody goes, has an obsession with chocolate. So if you really look at the original chocolate seed, it's very, it's bitter. By the dark chocolate, 85% or 72% there is the bars. The Peruvian chocolate. It's really good. Yeah, 85%. Lots, the Peruvian chocolate no. is one of the best. Yeah, because the Incas, yeah. the Incas, the kings. They have that. Yeah, yeah the really? kings made it. All right. Let, let, so we've talked, let's talk about diet restriction. So diet restriction is actually tied to um, calorie restriction because uh, somebody just spoke about uh, olive oil. I, I don't do olive oils anymore because there's a lot of fraud in the olive oil market. Mm -hmm. yes. People are mixing a lot of nonsense True. and selling True. it as expensive olive oil. Mm -hmm. So you want to just stay with the oils that, I mean, Avocado oil is very expensive. Very expensive. <laughs> I know. That's why I just eat the avocado. <laughs> right. Avocado mm -hmm. oil is very... And uh, peanut oil, not good. Mm -hmm. So no granite oil, no canola, none of those. Corn. They're inflammatory. No corn oil. Sunflower. In, no, no. Those. no. But grapeseed. Grapeseed. Yes. Because those are high temperature oils, like with the avocado oil and coconut oil. You can use olive oil in the cold form mm -hmm. for not, salads, not, oh, okay. not cooking. The okay. cooking oils, the high temperature oils, okay. are those oils for the fats. And the fats are critical because our brain needs good fats. And that's why we sell uh, a lot of our, our omega, the, uh, the omega 3s. Uh, the keto drinks, you still use that in your coffee. Yeah. So it's very good that you get those fats. Um, it's very, very important, guys. How about bacon? 
What? Bacon. bacon. What is that? Bacon. 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 As long as it's not fried. It's not fried. Oh. Or if it's fried in avocado oil, it's okay. Yes, bacon. It's very good fat. Why do you need to fry bacon in oil? It is oil. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Americans fry bacon. But we don't Wait, put no, oil. It's oil. 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 It's oil. 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 Whatever. But you can bake them. But bacon is okay. I feel this is not processed. Just Correct. Air fryer. Yeah. How can you process bacon? Yeah. 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 Okay, guys. Okay. Your bacon obsession. <laughs> <laughs> bacon is good. <laughs> Just sort it out. Make sure you do it yourself. And in the old country, people created their own bacon and dried it in the ceiling, and oh. that was great. But here, you're not sure where you're getting it and whether it's processed or not. So too many complications in Western culture. There's uh, one sardine that sells at Costco. Sardines are very good. What? Not it's Costco sardine. <laughs> no, no Costco. Because the sardine are can from Morocco. And it's all in olive oil. Oh, but that olive oil is not good olive oil. Look That's at the price of the sardine. Wonder. Yeah, when you look at the price of something, it should tell you. Right, how can they sell a sardine for three, four dollars and then it has good olive oil? It's not possible. Mm. First of all, the sardine is very good fish. It's really one of the highly recommended fishes for the omegas. But the olive oil there is not very good. Yeah, you should buy very expensive one. Okay, so it's the same thing with the fish oil. It's the same thing with the fish oil that people buy at Costco. The quality is not good. Okay, all right. So let's talk about, so we talked about uh, diet restriction. We spoke already about calorie restriction. So let's come to fasting. Let's come to fasting. So it's recommended that each of us builds a regime around intermittent fasting. Right? So some people do 16 by 8, which means that they eat just one meal a day and they're fasting for 16 hours, right? Or they eat within an eight hour period. And some people are doing really recommending that, David recommends that every month you should do a full 24 hour fast. The body loves fast because as part of health for detoxing and as part of longevity, the body really likes not being overwhelmed with metabolism. Metabolism, is really one of the big challenges in reducing the length of your life. That's why animals that hibernate for like three to four, five, six months, where they are asleep and they're not eating, have a very long life and they don't have chronic illnesses. Okay? So it's very important that we start instituting some kind of fast, right? And so what we have done in creating what we call our standard recommended bu bundle of nutrients for everyone is that we've chosen a bundle now that also comes as a meal replacement. So the, 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 the one month bundle costs about $600. And so we've calculated that if you're, the cheapest meal you could have every day is about 10 bucks. So that's about $300 already in that price. Mm -hmm. Plus, you're getting all the nutrients that you need for the day. So you're spending another $300 to get the nutrients. So the meal that you're getting at the rest of the day could be anything, right? And with that strategy, you could eat a little rice, a little bread, a little of those things that you like, small portions of it, and enjoy those little things that you really like without feeling like you're suffering from a very strict diet restriction. Is that making sense? Am I clear about that? Like a couple of spoons of rice, it's fine. If it's just once a day, and if that's the only time you eat it, right? Or one or two teaspoons of, a, of a ice cream if you really need it. For those people who don't have a sugar problem already, right? I was talking to Soul today. No fruits. Once your sugar is at a certain level, you cannot eat sweet fruits. You cannot. It's, a, it's, a, it's not true that everyone can eat an apple. I cannot. Because I already have uh, insulin resistance. 
and therefore the, the, the minute the body senses sugar in your bloodstream problems inflammatory so there's glycemic stress and so you want to keep that sugar so I've spoken about this before that the upper limit is 90 mm -hmm. and the lower limit is 70 and so what the research on uh, this is fasting blood sugar right when you go they do the test so a lot of people thought that if it's going like that it's okay but what they're finding out is that that's what they want it to be so the more you keep and that's why they're recommending that a lot of people who have this problem be on metformin or berberine we want to flatten your sugar line this is a very very important issue because these spikes are actually bad for your health even though it is not going out of bounds is that clear so we want to normalize it so I'm taking metformin. I think Dr. Yi is taking berberine. And you're taking berberine too. So it's very important that you take something. Even though we're not eating carbohydrates that much, you want to take something that's going to really level sugar in your blood. Yes. So if you get on that $600 program, would you have to take something extra anymore, like metformin? Yes. That's for lifespan. So, yeah, that's so, for lifespan. So, so yeah, that, hold on. That program is over here. That six hundred dollar program. That's an ODA. This one is a different program. Do you do the same program at the same time? Yeah. I do it. Yeah. Yes. Because what am I doing here? So this might give me that, and this normalizes it. Is that making sense? Are we clear? And what, why is this normalization is for lifespan and this is for health span. So we are saying that even health span is not enough to deliver lifespan. Is that clear? Because we now know that low caloric levels increases the length of life. Even if it's healthy calories. That's what all the experiments are showing. So if you just bring down the calorie level, it actually increases lifespan. And we've, gone, we've spoken about that in terms of the mitochondria. Is that making sense? All right, we've talked about those things. Clear, let's go to the next one, which is exercise. So let's look at exercise physiology. Okay, there are four aspects. Number one is strength. Why is strength necessary? To stand, to pick up boxes, to live life. Yeah, well, yeah. the, the muscular balance. balance. To balance. keep balance. balance. Correct. Balance. It's about balance. balance. Strength is about balance. Yes. 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 Even though we're going to talk about stability, because stability is not balance. <laughs> See, to be able to do this, I'm actually using strength. Right? Are you using but, stability? Yeah, to do that is actually stability that your legs are stand. So, strength and stability is the reason why human beings can walk upright, run, jump, and do the different things we do. And it's critical for longevity. And so you have to do exercises that are gonna give you both strength stability. and stability. And one of the big things about strength is being able to go down, squat, until your ass is touching your feet, and stand up without support. Let's see it. I can't do it because my, <laughs> my prizes. Well, you should do it. I know you can do it. Yes, but it's a very, very important aspect of strength. And why can most of us not do it? We don't practice. You don't practice. No, because we sit on chairs. 
in cultures like Korea or places where people sit on the floor, even the old women are very strong because of that. Yeah, because they squat. So squatting is one of the big trainings for strength, right? And they can fold their legs and they can squat. I cannot comfortably sit in that position for a long time. But even 90-year-old women in Korea I see in the market, they can just go down and fold their legs without any problem. How many 90-year-old people can do it here? <laughs> John is showing off okay, now. Okay, stand up without your hands. Yes, stand up without support. <laughs> you see that? Exactly. But you write a grace. You see Korean women sitting and standing. Even the queen will go down and sit down without touching anything. Look at old Korean drama. They see even the old people, they all go down to their feet, sit down, and they can stand up without support. It's a very powerful measurement of strength and stamina. All right, so we've spoken about, so how does one get stamina? Uh, cardio, aerobic. Okay, well, not really. Cardio? Yes. Yeah, cardio. Well, so even if you do cardio, can you run up a hundred steps? Yes, yes. probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably? Yeah. Without breaking into yeah. a sweat? Yeah. Yeah, no, not from you. cardio. No, yes, no. no. Cardio comes from much. drills. Yes, comes yeah. from repetition. Yeah. Drills. Yeah. Not just anaerobics or aerobic. Oh, yeah. Which are the other ones we're going to talk about. And what's the difference between aerobic and anaerobic exercises? Oxygen. Correct. Oxygen up or oxygen down. And why are anaerobic or aerobic exercises very important? And what's an aerobic exercise? Google it if you don't know. It's important to learn. Some uh, what they call aerobic. aerobic. Yeah, aerobic exercise. It's like stair stepper. Right? Why, why is it different? What is anaerobic exercises? That would be like yoga. The intake. Yeah, what is the difference? One is uh, high energy and yoga is not high energy. Not as yoga hot give, yoga. Yoga yeah. gives you uh, flexibility. Correct. Stability. So one is about flexibility yeah. and stability, and the oh. other one is around endurance and endurance. stamina. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are we getting that? Yeah. What? And all those things are necessary. It's like that video I posted on Facebook where these stupid people drove up and the lions are sitting on the road. Yeah, I saw this. <laughs> and some of them have their window down. And I was like, let me watch this and see one of them being eaten. You know the stupidity of human beings. I know. So the, the lions are walking around and your window is open. And I'm like, did people just grow up in city stupid? Yeah. Yes. yes. Your food. They don't know that in one second that lion will be in the car. Once, I mean, a blink. Blink. <laughs> Do you know? And, and then people, they come and drive and they sit there and they don't know that with one punch they'll break the windscreen. Yes. And then what are you going to do? One punch, yes. the windscreen is gone. Oh. Yes, it's just those, those lions were having fun that day. They were teasing the driver. They already too. filled up, right? They, didn't, they weren't hungry. And they were lying in the sun. Right. And they blocked the road. So you need to just go back, go wait until they've left. Sitting there watching them, what if one of them got hungry again? Mm -hmm. My God, yeah. They can smell all this good meat around. Anyway, I watched that video and I thought people can be so silly. Okay. Wouldn't the lions be aggressive then? Those lions would just walk around. around. No, they so walk around, but what if you piss them off? Well, if they get hungry, they can attack you right away. Yeah. There is no way. No out. warning. There is no way out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There is no way out. This is animal. <laughs> <laughs> no, for us who grew up in where there's animals, we know that there is no warning. Mm. Bam, you're gone. Mm. So you don't, Just you run. see them, you go. <laughs> there is no conversation. <laughs> no. Like, ah, let me take some pictures. <laughs> That's stupid. Right? I know that people come from Europe on tour. Oh, let's take some pictures safari, of the yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. picnic. Let's go but how many black people you see on the safari? <laughs> <laughs> they do the tour guide. Yeah, the tour guide doesn't get out. 
<laughs> yeah, some of them yeah. stand up in the truck to take the child, you know, take uh, you out. Yeah, yeah, but some people put their hand out. Yeah. I know, tourists are stupid. They think they're in Los Angeles Zoo. Yeah, they don't <laughs> exactly. All right, let's talk about the next subject on uh, lifespan. And that next subject is our mental strength. Our mental strength. And at the core of this mental strength is what? Meditation. No, there is one big thing that kills us. Mindset. Stress. Stress. Bad habit. We all know where stress is from, right? We've talked about the four types of stress. So Perceived. Kim tells us, what are the four types of stress? Perceived stress. Perceived stress. Chronic stress. <coughs> no. Inflammation. Destruction. Yes, inflammation. Inflammation. Sugar. Sugar. Sleep. And sleep. So, so that the four sources of stress. Less sleep. Too much sugar, too much inflammation, too much perceived. Those are the four stresses that kill all of us. What's the first one? Perceived stress. Perceived. Perceived. Yeah. It's the stress that says, my car is better than your car. <laughs> <laughs> or they bought a house that is bigger than our house. <laughs> right? Perceived stress. The sun is still better than mine. <laughs> you got it. You got it. The son got admission to Harvard, and our son is going to Cal community Cal college. Your your grass is greener than ours. <laughs> yeah, your grass is greener. They they got a new car. We don't have it. That's perceived stress. So when we combine all of this, and most people suffer from this. Suffer from the sugar, I just spoke about the sugar one, inflammation from a lot of the foods, and perceived stress because we cannot get enough. I call it, when I, I teach, when I teach my staff, I call it the land of enough. You know, enough does not exist. You mean appetite? <laughs> yes, your appetite. There is no place where you can have enough, right? Even those kings that had a hundred wives, they wanted more wives. Yes. <laughs> Even Warren Buffett that has 50 billion wants more money. So when you know that there is no enough, then you just need to be happy with what you got. Right? Because in the end, we're going to leave all of it behind anyway. Right? And travel alone. So the big issue about mental strength is really how do you build a stress response architecture, right? Meditation. Well, what is the purpose of meditation? To calm yourself down. Yes, it is really manage your mind. to manage perceived stress. So, so hold on, hold on. People just say meditation, but how can you calm yourself down when the situation around you does not require calming yourself. So like, if a lion was here now, you're going to calm yourself down? <laughs> <laughs> Do you get the point? Yes. All right. I'm trying to make the point. So if you don't have money to pay your, your rent, how are you going to calm yourself down? So the reality of life is, I know a lot of people say meditation, but meditation only happens after you've solved the problems of life. Right? And that's why uh, Dina teaches financial planning. Since most of the stress is from money, right? Yeah. Most of the stress, perceived stress, comes from money and our relationship with money. And therefore, the question is not just meditation. Acceptance. Well, no, it's not. Ignorance. It is actually managing your appetite and saving, right? You have to, I, I call it balancing appetite and performance, right? If you work this hard, you cannot have this appetite 
your appetite needs to ma be balanced to your performance, right? It's like people were telling me, we need rent control so we can stay in Huntington Beach. No. You cannot go move away from Huntington Beach. Do you get the point? So I asked one of my friends on Facebook, so if you invested in a property in Huntington Beach, would you want rent control? Yeah. At that moment, they, they changed from being liberal to being conservative immediately. <laughs> Nobody wants their property under rent control. If you cannot afford to stay in Huntington Beach, you move to Santa Ana. That's how you manage your appetite. So you don't live in Huntington Beach with people like Elizabeth who are rich and complain <laughs> that you have rich neighbors. <laughs> and complain that I have rich neighbors. They can't they pay too much rent. Go to Santa Ana or to Anaheim Hills or like we have our clinic here. Why? I could have opened this clinic in Irvine. We could have found the rent. And I would, couldn't be able to run free workshops. I'll be charging you a hundred bucks for this workshop. We can run it here for free because the rent is not that high. So we've managed that appetite. Some people say, oh, child, you should open the clinic in Newport Beach. I'm like, oh, would you pay the rent? <laughs> you know how people yeah. have big ideas if it's not their money. Yeah. Or open one in Beverly Hills. Oh, yeah, really? You're killing me. Are you going to bring the customer? And then when the customer is working, I say, the supplements, that used to be 600 are now 900 Why is it so expensive? Because I have to pay for the rent. <laughs> you see the reason? So when you go shopping in Newport Beach, you need to appreciate the fact that they're paying the rent. <laughs> part of the reason why you're paying high is because they're paying the rent. Is, is that clear? And so part of the challenge in life is, how does one reduce stress? Right? It's a very important issue. Like this morning, I woke up and I was calculating so many different things about coronavirus and Vietnam. Should I cancel the conference? Should I not cancel the conference? We're getting different feedback that people may not come, people may come. You know, just stressing about how do I recover cost? This is our strategy, trying to balance those things, right? But it's all about planning and building back up. Right? How does one reduce inflammation stress? Just do your diet. It's kind of so there are three things. Number one is to clean your gut. Your GI. And take your probiotics and your enzymes and your prebiotics. Before the meal, okay? Before the meal. Yes, take your <laughs> enzymes before the meal. And then the second thing you want to do, there are inflammatory foods. You know, for a long time I didn't know this, like corn, like peanut, like the inflammatory foods, right? Some of them are good, but not all the not time, right? Like spicy foods, some of them are inflammatory. So you need to be very careful how you take spicy foods, right? So managing inflammation is also a very important way to reduce your stress. Because that's a stress that you don't even know you have, mm -hmm. right? And then the other one is sugar. sugar. And we've spoken about the sugar one. So just <laughs> saying that, right, you go to the doctor and your sugar bound is between 90 and 70. And your doctor will say you're fine. But the question is that we have not looked at this variability. That's why a lot of people now are wearing the CGM, the glucometer that tracks your sugar for a life. You can get it as a prescription and wear it. It's on your cell phone and every time you eat it, it's gonna show and it will show your sugar profile over a month or two, which is how long you may use it and then you give it up. Because now you can use that to design your lifestyle. Because even though we say you can eat blueberries, right or you can eat this for some people they eat ca ca uh, cauliflower and their glucose shoots up we also have different ways in which our body reacts to food and you need to find your way which foods react in your body differently right so we can say oh if avocado is good for you this is good but you need to go really test it out so you really can't test it out uh, just with your body and no you cannot you have to have this equipment 
Yes, that's what a lot of people are using. To narrow down the type of food. To narrow down yeah, the, narrow the down foods food. yeah. and even the time they eat those foods. So a lot of people are doing that. Then they then yeah. fine tune the foods that really work for them. So they have to optimize. Yes, they find the foods that really work for them. Right? It's important, especially if you've had cancer or things like that, or you've been diagnosed, it's very, very important that you find those foods that really keep, so that it doesn't matter what, how much of them you eat, your sugar level stays flat. It means that your body is actually optimized for those foods, right? So that's what they're calling nutrigenomics, where you find the optimization of your gene to the food types. It's a very important thing. A lot of companies are offering false theories around there that we can test you and give you your food type, but even Dr. Walsh, before he died, that's what he did. He was carrying this, and he said, Charles, it's amazing that I would just drink, uh, because he was still drinking juice and thing, and the sugar would just spike. And he said this, I think, so he was testing a lot how much he could drink to push the sugar a certain level and things like that. Very interesting things that he was doing before he died. Anyway, um, then there is the big one about sleep. You must address sleep because the stress that comes from the circadian control has long-term effects in things like Alzheimer's, dementia, and things like that. So if you're not sleeping well, you must fix it. And what is the biggest reason why people cannot sleep? Hormones. Hormones. Yes, not stress. It's hormones. And poor people sleep all night. <laughs> which yeah. tells you that the economy is stress, right? Have you seen poor people? They sleep a lot. <laughs> better sleep. Yeah, better. So, hormones is the one... no worries about Yeah, they don't Yeah, so uh, hormones is the big driver for people not sleeping well. For men, the testosterone levels that drop, and for women, the estrogen levels that drop, and they're maintaining the... Um, the pro progesterone uh, and the other levels at balance. It's a critical measurement that as a human being you need to know where your hormone levels are and if you're not taking hormone replacement therapy you must be taking natural products that are helping boost your hormone levels. It's very important. It's not just for your libido. The hormones are like the conductors of metabolism. It's very important, right? Including cortisol. So you need to also measure your stress hormone, the cortisol level, because if it is high all the time, it very dis it destroys the architecture of your brain also. How do you measure that? With your pee. We have a test here where we collect your pee. Uh, it calls the Dutch test. It will measure your cortisol and progesterone, your testosterone, and your estrogen. Right? Yeah. All right. So it's very important that uh, because the cortisol test is that it takes the test throughout the day because your cortisol is supposed to be like this throughout the day. Your cortisol, when you wake up, and then it needs to go like that. For a lot of people, they wake up and the cortisol stays there. This is a very challenging situation for cortisol. It doesn't stay that high, but it comes down and it's fluctuating like your glucose all day, which causes this destructive stress. Okay? Make sense? So did we deal with stress? But there were issues here about exercise and meditation around that. Um, meditation is really about what? What is at the core, at the heart of meditation? To slow down the heartbeat, I think. That's one. But what is really at the core of meditation? To clear your mind? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. To center yourself. To Correct. Your spiritual sense. Correct. Yeah. It is to be present. Yes. Why are we not present? We're distracted. We're distracted. No, we're distracted by what? Uh, the outside yeah. the environment. Everything. We are distracted by the past and the, and the future. We are here, right? 
and the future. And what is distracting about the past and the future? Why is this a persistent distraction? Why is it? Because of what happened, what will happen. Yeah, what's the connection between the two? Fear. That? Perception? Fear that what will? Oh, that something's going to change or something's going to be more uncomfortable for us or drastic for us. Correct. Well, but the fear is that what happened before is going to happen again. Uh, yeah, because that is really the core. Be, yeah, so we create stories and always as stories. We never create stories of excitement, I'm going to be president. <laughs> we create stories, I'm going to fail. I'm not good enough. You might have an accident. People don't say there's coronavirus in China. Travel safely. Oh, you think you should be going? For some reason, human culture is very negative. Do you see the point, Victor? They don't say drive fast and enjoy life. Drive slow, don't have an accident. So we are always thinking that the things will go wrong. Why is that? Why do we always think that things will go wrong? Somebody is going for a surgery when? Next week? Ten days. In ten days for her knee surgery and she's been looking at all the research and we know she's going to be here in another month causing trouble. Right? <laughs> With a new knee mm -hmm. in place. You she did her good. Ezra scan mm -hmm. and all good. Kim did her Ezra scan, all good. Dr. Yi did her Ezra scan, all good. No cancer. Right? So, um, and I know Elizabeth was shuddering inside the machine, no. trying to meditate the, oh, the yeah. potential cancer away before the machine could find it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was lying in the machine thinking, oh please, oh please. But the results were clear. And what's Ezra? You know, a lot of people ask me on Facebook. Ezra is the AI-driven uh, architecture for interpreting the MRI imaging. And it is a way of looking at whether there are potential. The thing is that it always finds things like the things about aging and your spine and all of that, nodules in your heart, muscle, liver, and kidney, those are normal things. And it's just uh, aging issues, but very, very important things that we found out. Okay, how are we doing for time? I need to be closing shortly. So let's go to the next one, which is called, we call exogenous. molecules. So I'm not calling them supplements because these are the new things that are being, are being touted and being experimented for increasing lifespan. Alright? So number one is Reservatrol. Drink wine. Well, you cannot drink enough wine to get enough for the day. So we have a supplement here, which is very good, because wine also makes you drunk, except you drink the whole bottle of red wine every night. So re Reservatrol is very important. They're also asking that you take an aspirin, a baby aspirin every day. The baby aspirin. And what is the baby aspirin for? Blood. It reduces inflammation. They're also recommending that metformin. you take either metformin or berberine. Something else that they are recommending is this very expensive supplement for blood circulation. It's made from earthworm outcomes. Yes, yeah. it is one of the most expensive. How much is this one? 168. 168. Wow. But it's and if you though. if you do the re the search on the internet, you will it's a reputable supplement for people who have circulatory issues. Okay. Yeah, cancer patients, cancer patient. a lot of patients. Uh, the price on Amazon is what? 200 and something. 
This is similar to the Neo 40, but this is a little, uh, this, this is much better. This has a, a stronger it's reputation. From research nutrition. Yes. Yeah. So it's a Canadian company, and it's getting. Uh, you can go read the the theories around it. It's um, for people who've done our MENLA scan who have circulatory yeah. problems. Yes. This is a fundamental requirement for that. So if you have a also, Doctor Yi was looking at research around. Um, Lyme. Lyme. Lyme disease and also neuropathy. Mm -hmm. So people who have neuropathy, because what is really at the core of neuropathy? Now I'm diverging again. What is neuropathy, Professor Jad? I don't know. Sorry. Something with the head. The nerves. No, it's the nerves. Your nerves and nerves. Yeah, what is wrong with the nerves in neuropathy? The electrical current. That's up. what it is. But why is that a problem? Do you have neuropathy? No. Why don't you have neuropathy? <coughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, so what causes neuropathy? <coughs> radiation sugar. Sometimes radiation causes neuropathy, yeah, but really what causes neuropathy? The diabetes. It is the vascular implications of diabetes, yeah. which means that the blood circulation to the extremities is compromised. Once it's compromised, there is less nutrients going to, to those area. nutrients in those extremities, and so they begin to die. It's called neutron death. And so when those axons begin to die, it begins to cause a lot of problems. Uh, with regard to your circulatory, and then it, the tingling begins. Yeah, you get the numbness and the tingling. Therefore, that's why we go back to the issues of circulation. So, but the beamer mat is good for that too. If you have that, you don't need this. That's not true. The beamer mat is not giving you the nutrients that address the underlying. What the beamer is doing is using current to drive the blood flow. When you get off the beamer, there's, no there's nothing. This one is persistent throughout the day, making sure it opens the capillaries <coughs> for the nutrient to feed them. Then use the Viagra. Huh? The Viagra. 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 <laughs> oh <my> Blood <laughs> flowing. It's cheaper. Actually, there is an article on that. I was looking at it. No, I think it's... Uh, there was an article on that, and uh, it's, a, it, it's interesting, you guys are crazy. <laughs> um, I was reading it this morning on that, actually. Let me see what I see here. So that's uh, David Sinclair. Uh, I thought it was here. If not, yes. I am. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so the minute you said it, I realized I was reading it this morning, and I was like, he must have been reading my thoughts, right? Because of the circulatory issues, right? Mm -hmm. so why is that even exercise could not help? It can mitigate, but it cannot help, like, solve the issue of... No, exercise helps, yeah, but, it, but it does not solve it. Yeah. Because exercise is like the beamer, only happens when you're exercising. When you stop exercising, the blood flow stops. That's the thing with the beamer, except you're going to lie on the beamer all day or wear it mm -hmm. all day. But this is it has a delayed release formula, mm -hmm. so it's supporting blood flow all day. Yeah, that's the challenge. I'm not saying beamer doesn't work. But they but claim that the beamer, even when you get off it, you're still having the blood circulation. Yeah, but it peppers off like everything else. It's like after you exercise, there's recovery, right? And then by the next day, you have to exercise again. So everything... It, it does not repair the damage. Uh, no, it does not. Yeah. This does. Mm -hmm. because Exercise helps mm -hmm. in repairing that damage. But you know that whole process is what we call angiogenesis, the regeneration of new blood cells. Exercise doesn't do that, it helps it. The BIMA doesn't do that. Um, we have some stimulation that helps with that, but this is at the core of that, okay? Very important issue that you need to understand neuropathy, and a lot of cancer patients who've done cancer treatment also have neuropathy, 
right, which was that it damaged a lot of blood vessels. And uh, so there's a lot of, um, we need to understand this about a lot of the equipment mm -hmm. that we use to do things compared to nutrients, right? No stimulation, even acupuncture, can solve problems without the underlying nutrient support. That's why you get the herb drink. Correct. To support with that. Right. Because it stimulates, but then the body needs to be given the nutrients to make it happen. Yes, you had a question. So would that also help for MS? Um, yes, but I don't think we put it on your program. Have you done Menla? Have you done the Menla scan? Oh, um, yeah. Did you? Long time ago. Yeah, why don't you do it today? Let's look at your circulation. Yeah. If your circulation is compromised, then you need to be on it because it helps with blood flow and nutrients mm -hmm. across. The big issue with MS is neuroinflammation. Mm -hmm. The gut and the blood brain barrier has mm -hmm. been compromised. Mm -hmm. So that's the big issue. Yes, mm -hmm. it will also help with circulation, but we want to fix the neuroinflammation issue first. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's the core issue about MS is mm -hmm. neuroinflammation which comes from the gut inflammation. So once microbes, toxins go into the bloodstream and go up and penetrate the blood-brain barrier, that's when it compromises. Because if you look at MS, then it begins to attack the astrocytes and begins to damage the, the, the neural architecture in the brain. So when they run scans, they can see dark spots. That's what they call MS. Right? It feels like neuropathy. Yes, neuropathy. exactly. Yeah, because you don't lose feeling and yeah. So do your menla scan. Let's see where you are on that. Okay. All right. Okay. So where were we? Metformin. You need to write the last Yeah, I'm gonna write it. Rapamycin. That's the new drug that they were using for um for um. No, hold on. They were using it for when they do, um, what is it called when they do put you a new kidney or a new heart? Transplant. Yes. Transplant. Yeah. To reduce your immune system so that it will accept the new organ. So there's a prescribed dose for rapamycin that people are now using because by lowering a very low dose of rapamycin, brings down the immune response system, therefore reducing the energy uptake of the whole body. It's kind of dangerous, it has to be prescribed, and you need to take it on that control. So they are recommending like you take like one tablet a week, and it really helps, and it's one of those natural occurring products also. I think it's produced by snails or something. It was discovered by a Canadian <laughs> scientist. And it revolutionized transplant uh, medicine because it lowers the immune system so the body can accept the new organ coming in. So rapamycin is a very interesting new product around that. Yes? No, no, okay, so you had a question. Okay? So there are a couple more orders. So we have Reservatrol, we have Aspirin, we have Metformin. Uh, a lot of people are also adding statins, even though a lot of people don't, are not comfortable with it. Um, well, no, they're adding statins because statins has big inflammatory reduction opportunities. But if you don't want to take it, it also makes men's dick not to work. So if uh, you look very well, I'm concerned. Well, I'm supporting that here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to share all the information that I have to share. Okay. Yes. There are, everything in life has a give and a take, right? Yeah. So there are certain things you're going to do that may affect other things, but there are other things you could do to counterbalance it. Uh, right. Statins don't affect your uh, libido mm -hmm. if your hormone levels are okay. okay. It only compromises it if your hormone levels are not okay. But the statin is increased to have diabetes, really. Yeah, but that's why you're taking the metformin. No, the metformin. no. That's why you're taking the metformin. Yeah, it balances out. Yes. Good point. 
because uh, the metformin is balancing that uh, because people who take statins without metformin have increased chances of diabetes. Yes, of diabetes. That's correct. Yes. Okay. How are we doing so far? My question is, so we have the $600 package and are any of those things included? No. So now we're at 900 <laughs> well, because, uh, why are you complaining to me? I'm, I'm not God. Right. I didn't make your architecture. Uh, and, and, and first of all, you, you lived your life like this. Why are you complaining to me? <laughs> Am I the one who was eating all the chocolate and all the sugar and all the cakes and all the cookies? Kill the messenger? <laughs> exactly. You want to kill me because I'm telling you the truth? <laughs> that, but no, but you no, but she raises an interesting question. Yeah, yeah, we can only do so much. Yeah, but so what are you gonna do? You're gonna do a knee surgery. You're gonna do a shoulder surgery. You're gonna do a brain surgery. They accumulate, and most Americans are going bankrupt trying to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. So that's the option. You're lucky that you have um, Medicare, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Medicare is covering. Mm. Some people don't have it. They have Medicare. And Medicare would not cover a knee surgery. So, yes, Medicare would not cover it. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It would not. It's very con restricted. They would have to look for a lot of other things before it would recommend that. Yeah. So, so it depends what we want to do in life, right? You want to buy a Louis Vuitton bag? You want to live in Huntington Beach, or you want to take the Chalcina supplement? <laughs> that's it. Right, Beate? It's choice. Because imagine if you had all your supplements, you could live in Santa Ana and be healthy. Right? Isn't that true, Victor? You don't have to be in Huntington Beach to be healthy. Well, living closer to the ocean is a positive, isn't it? You pay the price for it. They have more oxygen. But also, the tsunami is their friend. <laughs> the tsunami is their friend when it comes. There's a price for every choice we make. And so, on top of the 600, yes, you have to take these things. You're reducing a meal a day, and you're optimizing, right? When you go into a well-built five-star hotel, you don't complain, why did they put ceramic floors? I didn't want to pay for ceramic floors. <laughs> you have a choice. You don't have to be there. <laughs> right? If you want to have a healthy life, mm -hmm. they call it a revolutionary act. I'm just making a distinction. That? It was 600 for a healthy life. For health. And now it's... That's health. That's not lifespan. Oh. Oh. We're teaching oh. now about this. Health span plus lifespan. Uh, okay. And actually, it's about a thousand dollars. It's a thousand dollars beautifully spent every month. Wouldn't you agree so? Beautifully spent. And when you arrive in heaven, God is going to give you the refund. <laughs> I, I can spend so much time there, right? I spend more time on earth. So yes. I get a refund. <laughs> no, the time here is a blip. You're going to spend eternity there, and the refund is With amazing. Master Card, yeah. Actually, and everybody who we really, yeah, everybody who really takes care of themselves here, God has promised that there'll be a feast of chocolate, <laughs> of cookies, wine, of, of wine, of uh, uh, what else? A banquet. Uh, in a banquet of, a of banquet. chicken. Love chops. Uh, yeah, love chops. <laughs> Lobsters, lobsters, lobster, 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 lobster gambling, <laughs> all the yeah. things that uh, you probably you didn't do. <laughs> Not now. What? He said, oh yeah, let me go there. I told him that now. He likes gambling. Gambling. I told him about the Hawaiian gambling. Everything is up there. He has promised us that in my father's house, well, they are many using Bitcoin. There are many or mansions, or and some of the mansions are gambling mansions and if lobster mansions. <laughs> and then there is a yeah, Uber taxis to take you wherever you want to go eat. The Bit Uber eats too. Bitcoin? And there are chocolate <laughs> Ubers. <laughs> yeah, and you can have your house just built of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> See now, you guys are all running away from your addiction. <laughs> We're going to overwhelm you with your addictions. 
<laughs> because that's why we call it heaven. <laughs> for that, if you take statin, you have to take CoQ10? Yes. It's very important. Like it balances. But also, you have to take metformin. But CoQ10, you should take anywhere. Because it goes to that well, energy that metabolism. Yeah, CoQ10 <laughs> mandatory. But why they mix it with calcium? Sometimes statin with calcium. Yeah, because sometimes uh, the statin uh, 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 metabolizes the calcium out of the body. Yeah, so they want to... They want to... Yeah, and this is a prescription. Metformin is a prescription. It is. Yeah, you, you guys get that? But you can take yes. the bubble instead of that instead, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can take Burberry or Dr. Mm -hmm. Noel can write your prescription for metformin. Same thing? Yeah, I take metformin. Oh, okay. They take Burberry. Oh, okay. And then the rapamycin, we haven't tried that yet. The reservatrol we have, aspirin you can buy anywhere. The statins your doctor can give you. And then we have the NADs. You thought I was done? No, the NADs is more important. NADs? Yeah. Yes. yes. The NAD. The NAD. Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth. Well, you, 1100, you, 1200. You, you prefer to die? You prefer to die? Yeah. I just got a swing That's not an option. <laughs> exactly. So, you, you see, I drew the graph. You either live like this or you live like this and die. So, then, then. so and, and you know, in my culture, when somebody dies in their sleep, it is a celebration. It's a yeah. blessing. Yeah. It's a big blessing. No sense. Here we're all lying in hospital, struggling not to die. Yeah. Doctor, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're back. <laughs> right? It's crazy, isn't it? In those days, you die, you die. Here now, we're like... Bring him back. We need him back here. He hasn't written. He did not sign his will yet. Right, right. <laughs> Listen, where's that money gonna go? Bring him back. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Um, how was that? Good. I, I, you, I, you, this is your second time. I missed your name. The first time. <laughs> so from the uh, 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 AM. Primerson. The next uh, radio no. event. Oh, the radio event. I've seen you before, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. But the first time for seminar. Ah, okay, yes. You're all right. Wonderful. How are you? Your name is? Louis. Louis, thank you for coming. How was it today, Louis? Very good. Very, very informative. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, how are you? Yeah, we're going to do something to Kim and Elizabeth. They're always talking. <laughs> I, I think uh, I'll come to it. I think they, they're, they're they're, they're used to being in a democratic culture. So in my <laughs> workshop, it's a, it's a dictatorship. You don't have a lot of rights. Yeah, well, I'll talk about NAD shortly. Go ahead. So how was it for you today? Really? All right. Thank you for coming. So what about you, Biate? Good. Good? I'm drinking the $600 thing. <laughs> <laughs> How many dollars there? How many dollars there? <laughs> How is it? You're using half a scoop, right? Yeah. Half a scoop mm -hmm. of everything and it makes. That's what yeah. I take too. And you're doing that as a meal replacement. Mm -hmm. That's it. How are you feeling? Tell us. What's Good. the experience like? Good. Uh, are you hungry during the day? I'm not really hungry. Not you, at all. I, I could just live off of that. See, for 600 bucks, we are feeding Biate. <laughs> Jad, you need to get on this program. Yeah. Might be, yes. Are talk about melatonin? Yes, uh, yes. I didn't want to, but you were worried about the price was you going up, so I stopped. At <laughs> <laughs> I was going to stop because you were kind of already causing problems with my audience, even though. You, all your comments, people in Baltimore are shivering. 1300 Yeah, I didn't want to add melatonin, but I can talk about melatonin. You know, melatonin has been found to really be very significant in helping for cancer. Is that so, prevention? Or uh, both, all three. For, for, pre, for prevention, that's initiation, for uh, progression, and for metastasis. And the research articles are clear on melatonin. Melatonin and DHEA. I didn't add DHEA. So already you're taking DHEA, right? No. 
you shoot me. <laughs> and Mel like told me. I will not need food. <laughs> well, don't you see she's confessing that once you have nutrients, you don't need, That's because uh, there's about how much? About 200 calories? It's about 200 calories in there, which is not bad. See, see, even though she's not your age yet, she's already at the 200, 250 calorie level. Let me just, oh, I just lost track of what I was going to say. Um, it does that, that doesn't count as calories. Does it? It counts in your calorie overall count. Okay. So yeah. if you were adding food later on, you need to count that you're taking 200 calories already. Okay, but if you're not counting calories, and you're only doing for health span, um, then my question is, don't you need a little more food? Or is that, an, uh, is that enough to live off of every day? Yes. It's a meal increase. But you're not getting your amino acids from... They're all in there. Wait, 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 from the animal. Amino no, acid. we have put all of it in there. Even animal? Yes. Amino acid. Can no. you bring a, a full set? Let's look at it. The, oh. yeah. Bring a full set so from the back. Food? No, it has all the amino acids. Oh. We didn't say it has animal. Oh, okay. We said the anim amino acids. Okay, but so I they've been said we needed animal. Because of the amino acids. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm sure she has read every box clearly, she right? Vieti, you're that kind of person. You've gone into detail every ingredient. Every box has sugar in it. So what can I do? I'm supposed to be living without sugar. I know. And it just triggers things. When you see a cookie, you want it. Because it's in there. Yeah. yeah. No. But it, it's hard. Meditate. Meditate. No, two more. We need five. Right. Right. No, I can't. Yeah, because you have sugar. Yeah, it's sugar. So just think about that in the flammacore which is managing inflammation. Look at all the amino acids, alanine, arginine, aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamic acid, glycine, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methathione, phyla that's all of them. They're in there, those amino acids. And they tell you how much, it's a proprietary blend. And then how many calories is in here? 210 calories and that is for two scoops yeah. we're asking you to take only half a scoop so, so when you combine food. all of it it comes to about 200 250 calories it can't be that much sugar then no. how, how much sugar is there because the 360 is no the sugar they've used here is the new sugar that is very low glycemic sugar yeah uh, not stevia they call it something you can read it yeah whatever they, what do they call it ribose Ribosome. Yes, yeah, something. Oh. It's a new kind of sugar extract from plant oh. yeah. that is very low glycemic. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't trigger. So those cravings that she was talking about comes from her dreams about uh, cookies. Oh, cookies. <laughs> 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 All right, Kim. Any uh, Elizabeth? Is that it? So NAD is the nicotinamide that works between the nucleus and the mitochondria. It, that is the protein that helps with that communication. Therefore, the nucleus is sending the right signals for energy to the mitochondria. I spoke about that in the beginning. So the NAD is what supplements that nutrient. And they've tested it, and you can see the videos with David Sinclair. Rats that didn't have NAD, same age, rats that have, they lived four or five times longer and more activity than the ones that they didn't have. So the experiments and read the lifespan book are um, very clear on it that NADs actually increase lifespan and our energy levels. Okay? And we have it here. Kim, feedback? I mean, this whole health span, lifespan is, is been out there. I mean, it's not like we just now talk about it, but it's getting more and more noticeable and more recognition. Correct. As you've seen, you know, many other companies now talking, talking about, about it. it. Yeah, so it's not just, you know. And there are lots of videos. You've watched those videos, yes, right, uh, Elizabeth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So there are lots of videos, and so we're trying to build the context around. Uh, these things are not simple. It takes a long time for us to implement them, but we want to make sure that you are aware, right, Victor? So gradually, you begin to look at Victor. I remember when Victor stepped in here a year ago, he was like, man, tell me, what should I be doing? Look at Victor now. Look at his face is brighter. He's more good looking. I'm kind of concerned, right? <laughs> Like Judd, he's going to get married again soon. How's it again, going, Victor? Wow. <laughs> Actually, Just be fast, fast. <laughs> Go ahead, Victor. I, I've adjusted to taking my supplements, my vitamins, my, my food, meal replacements, and yeah. everything I take. Now I'm, classic, I'm in class again today, and I realize i got to still take more to, to achieve the lifespan. Well, you know, I don't know how old I want to be. All I know is I want to be healthy. Yeah, but that's yeah. a question that you see the graph I draw. So the question but, is, but I'm, it's I a personal question. Healthier, so why should I take more? Well, the question well, or is... Or do I need to take more because I feel good already? Well, that's a judgment that you're going to make over time. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of people are suffering like from fatigue because you can take nutrients and things. Age has an impact. And the only way to address the age issue is to look at the lifespan problem. So you the could be, side. your yeah. sugar so could be in control, control and that's healthy. Yeah. But to, to normalize it with metformin, that's why even people who don't have diabetes are being asked to take metformin because it really regulates that sugar metabolism <coughs> which increases lifestyle, which is tied to the issue of low calorie. That's what the research is showing. And, and, and on the exercise, all exercise is important, but the exercise, they create different feelings within you. I mean, yes. because there's different endorphins, so you go to different levels. Yeah, but don't forget that the older you get, the lower the endorphins that are produced. So if you have nutrients, it can keep those levels plus your hormones at the right level. The question is, how do we slow down that process so that we are still strong, feeling good, mentally alert, and all the things that make us who we are? That, those are the big questions we're trying to answer. Mentally, you look younger. That's what he said. That's what I'm into it. <laughs> and so, so we are measuring, David Sinclair is 50. And his biological age measurements, I told you, is 30 years old. That's important. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't mean that he's 30 years old. No. It means that his biology is 30 years old. He's healthy. That it's is a old. very important thing. The skin is yeah. So that's all our goals, huh? Mm -hmm. We're going to die. Yeah. But we want to die healthy. And people like Francisco, mm -hmm. who potentially are centenarians, there is something they have yeah, that, that most of us do not have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand? Because to be 92 and be flying and traveling we means that he's at a level of health yeah. that most of us will not be at 92. Most people are 92, guys, <laughs> let's, let's pay attention. Most people are 92 already in Alzheimer's and retirement homes. So the fact that he's sitting here for two hours listening to me Without means that... It, <laughs> no, seriously. He wants, a, he wants another 90 years, huh? No, but you see what I'm saying. Yeah. It means yeah. that his health and lifespan are at a different level <laughs> from most of us. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to show. And thank you, Jad, for bringing him because he's a good example. Right? Same thing with Dr. Yi's father. He's 90. He's 90. And. Uh, he, he looks also very healthy, and he's very, he speaks, he understands. He's not like most other people um, who you, we need to always go to those retirement homes and see what's going on, or, or boarding care. And you will find out that, and that's what David Sinclair focused his research on. He started looking at centenarians and say, why are they different from the rest of us? Why do they age differently? Right, he's still smiling, he still has his wife, he still looks at women, which is a good sign. <laughs> he still checks out the women. I'm looking for a new girlfriend. 
Well with endurance. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> so you are like 20 years away from them or yeah. more. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, I want to be like him, right? I want to get there strong and ready. Okay, give me some feedback, Jad. How was today? As usually, good education and so much information. And thank you for that. God bless you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jad. I appreciate your friendship you and your right. attendance. Thank you. And Francisco, sorry I used you as an example. No, that's, I'm very happy to share, uh, you know, uh, me as an example, uh, my life uh, and how long I have been living and healthy yes. and with a good mind. Yeah. I was traveling, I just came back from Peru. You see that? All by myself. See? So uh, so wow. I just, uh, see that? Very happy to be. Uh, well, you know, we no love cane. Romano, so no cane. Here. No cane. Yeah. I have a wife that is jealous. She's thinking that I have another girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is recorded and it's going to happen. It's on, it's on video, you. just to let you know, in case you are watching it. You'll be in big trouble. <laughs> Please don't put me in trouble. I love you, bro. Yeah. Okay. We, we live right now on video. So you speak well, you yeah. exercise. He's getting sloppy. Yeah, I walk a lot. Oh, he works a lot. No, I walk. Well, 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 he, he walks, he walks in, in America. America. Yeah, that's my he exercise. Where well, it doesn't matter. No, he lives he in He is an example to us. So, David, uh, Sinclair traveled the world looking at centenarians and centenarians everywhere in the world have the same benchmark yeah. they don't have suffer from chronic illness and it's a genetic issue and so he wanted to look at what was in their genes that made them different and that's where most of this research has come from mm -hmm. that the end their energy systems are different their biochemistry for the mitochondria is different and the sustaining issue is that mitochondrial structure so it's been studied and that's where a lot of this lifespan research is coming from. I'm, I'm curious to know how long he wants to live to. To what age? <laughs> yeah. Uh, to what age do you, you want to get to, do you think? Whatever uh, God or destiny or faith, uh, God said. For me, but as long as I'm enjoying it. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, I, I don't want to worry about how, how long. She doesn't worry. You know. Because you have Because already she's done she's everything. Right. Right. Yeah, there's, no, there's no more curiosity. Right? And there is no expectation anymore. It's no like more. now it's like bonus no time. It's like bonus. There's, there's yes, it's bonus. I live in bonus. Yes, yes. thank exactly. you. Thank you. Thank you, my right. brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dina, feedback? Uh, it's very informative and um, it is more detail that we, you know, it's a slow learning and it has more stick. We have to continue because the Good more life. we know, yeah. the more we can help others. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And Mike, as usual, on the camera, thank you, Mike. I hope you are changing your life slowly. You're young and reckless, but you're going to learn. Vincent, thank you, and uh, Grace, my team, Louis, and Dr. E. So thank you, and people online, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.